As our planet faces mounting threats to its biodiversity, a new kind of scientist is emerging, the citizen scientist. We've done citizen science here for years and years. Actually, the Academy was founded by a group of people who were not professional scientists. So back in 1853, they came together and wanted to understand the biodiversity of California and celebrate it and share it with the world. But they weren't professional scientists. They were bankers and lawyers and had other jobs. And so we've had a long tradition of citizen science here and amateurs contributing to science. Rebecca Johnson and her colleague Allison Young are the architects and directors of the Academy's current citizen science program. All of our work here to rethink our programs coincided with a blossoming of citizen science as a discipline, partly because of technology and the ability for us to share information so much more easily. The iNaturalist or iNat app powered by the California Academy of Sciences and National Geographic, has become a pivotal component of citizen science projects. The app allows people to take and upload photos of plants and animals they spot in the wild. Here at the Academy, the science of natural history museums is about documenting biodiversity and discovering new species and understanding how species are related to each other. We really try hard in our citizen science program to give people that same experience of going out, documenting biodiversity, discovering the nature all around you, and really helping to connect people to their local nature and also to the science that happens at natural history museums like ours. iNaturalist photos are geotagged and timestamped, providing an ever-increasing digital archive of data. It's really nice for people to see that all science begins with something as small as just making an observation. The Academy has partnered with more than 300 institutions to organize the third annual City Nature Challenge, a global competition that aims to encourage public interest in nature and create a snapshot of urban biodiversity. Participants from nearly 70 cities on five continents are competing this year to see which city will make the most observations, identify the most species, and engage the most people during the four-day challenge. Marin County Parks and One Tam have joined the City Nature Challenge to host this Bio Blitz on Ring Mountain. Specialists and citizen scientists are particularly keeping an eye out for moths and butterflies. It's interesting to watch the generational change too, because I know a lot of older academics that are slightly like, they go to one, at the end of these, they always sort of have a place where all those postings go up on the computer and this older entomologist was sitting next to me goes, this is all fascinating, but what is it for? The whole citizen science thing is still in its infancy and we're still looking for the words of how to explain what's happening with something like INAT. The group gathers to observe and identify a moth that might be a species not seen on the mountain in years. Whether an expert or an amateur, anyone participating on a bioblitz could potentially spot a rare species previously undocumented in the area. This kind of probably all goes back to hunting. You have to study your hunt, you know, and you don't need to like pin it and hang it on the wall, but finding the target species. When you look at the map and you see all these observations, it's really, really powerful that all of these people are all sharing their observations and it is a movement. We are interested in, of course, people taking pictures and sharing them because that adds to our understanding of the mountain and it adds to our kind of global understanding of biodiversity. But really, for me, if people come to open spaces and see nature in a different way, like, that's a win. 
you can tell people forever. There are all these endangered species on Ring Mountain or species that are only found here, endemic species, 300 species of plants, but unless you're out here, that doesn't really mean a lot. A list of names is not the same as seeing all these wildflowers blooming on the hill. Just to the north, in Sonoma County, City Nature Challenge bio blitzes are underway in the Sugarloaf Ridge and Trioni Anadel California State Parks. Environmental scientist Bill Miller is guiding citizen scientists on these bio blitzes. And we've been doing this forever. I mean, the first citizen science were fishermen, hunters, and farmers, keeping records of where things were, when things grew. And in some cases, you know, they've been keeping records like that for hundreds of years. I think in Japan you can find records of when the cherry trees blossom, like over a thousand year period. These two parks burned in the recent fires in October in 2017. And so this is a way to sort of document change. There are some interesting species that are only seen after a fire. In some places, you know, maybe we haven't seen them for 80 years and, and now they'll pop up. There are parts of it that are different than they've ever looked before. Um, and some areas that are recovering so quickly, it's almost like it seems like the fire happened ages ago. It's great to see the way the plants and the ecosystem adapts and recovers. Bill lost his home in the recent fires. The experience changed the way the scientist views nature. For me, it gave me a greater appreciation for what people feel when they see a park burn and they feel sad for it. And as an ecologist, I've always said, oh, you know, it burns, it's going to be much better than it was before. The land will heal, it's fine. But if you were someone that lived out here, you say you raised your kids out here, maybe you used to climb that tree that is now burned up, that's a very real loss. got this uh, orange fungus that only follows after the fires happen. And it's just this artificial, like a, almost like a pastel orange. Sarah Reed from California State Parks and Tony Passantino from Sonoma Ecology Center have paired up to take a close look at the fire affected areas in Trioni Anadel Park. Redwood trees are particularly resilient to wildfires. There's just these burls and scars and scabs. It's got these two shoots um, of probably from a previous fire. You can see the, the younger shoots that just came up after this fire. So they self-stimulate the re-sprouting after a fire. Bioblitzes provide an opportunity to bring people together in an age when many people find themselves increasingly disconnected from nature and each other, tethered to the virtual world of social media and smart devices. We're pulling out our, our smartphones and taking a picture when we're at a concert. We're taking pictures of what we eat, for gosh sakes. Aficionados of iNaturalist and similar apps believe that the prevalence of smart device technology can be harnessed to help people reconnect with the outdoors. There is a danger that, that we are always looking through the lens of, of technology. And so sometimes it is good to sort of put it away and then just... During this year's City Nature Challenge, over 17,000 people made more than 400,000 observations on iNaturalist documenting more than 18,000 species around the world. Federal agency, the Presidio Trust, which manages the Presidio in partnership with the National Park Service, participated in this year's City Nature Challenge. One of our ambitious goals is to increase biodiversity in the Presidio. The trick becomes how do we measure that? And so 
one of the things that we really wanted to do is engage the public and see if we can get people, citizen scientists, to come out and help us in our monitoring efforts. BioBlitzes can help agencies like the Presidio Trust establish a baseline that allows them to monitor changes in biodiversity over time. Citizen scientists have participated in several of the Presidio Trust's wildlife restoration projects that have reintroduced rare species. One of those projects is taking place on Mountain Lake. There's a turtle there that was once abundant. It's the western pond turtle. But it was lost to the city, and it too is on a really steep decline in terms of its entire range through California. It's close to being an endangered species. And we have been working with Sonoma State University and San Francisco Zoo to rear them up and to restore them back into the lake. The citizen science component comes from engaging community members that are out and about to count them on a regular basis to make sure that the 50 that we put back and we put little radio collars on the back of them are out there in a lot. We're getting amazing data on the behavior of those turtles, how well that reintroduction is doing, how many have died, where they're going, and that's all done by this group of dedicated individuals that are really excited about the work we're doing. They're gonna give us the kind of feedback that we need in order to make it scientifically valid. There's a lot of threats, and there's a lot of things that are impacting the natural world as it exists today, from climate change, to habitat loss, to expanding urbanization. All of the things that we call biodiversity are things that humans benefit from. Cleaning our water, providing us with inspiration, providing us with beauty. And if we keep a good eye on them and we contend them and make them better, we have a much better life ourselves. Thank you.